The following game was my favorite of the ones I saw in the match between Alpha Zero and Stockfish. And the reason why is likely because it reminded me most of a human game. I felt like I was sitting and watching Magnus Carlsen slowly outplay another elite player in a position that was slightly better for White but probably shouldn't have been winning. Now I think that goes to show perhaps that Stockfish thought that the valuation was level, that there was no real risk of losing, but at a certain moment uh, AlphaZero was able to break through and thus achieve a victory. So Knight f3, Knight f6, and we see a symmetrical English where AlphaZero fianchettos the bishop. Now Black played Queen to b6, a bit strange because oftentimes Black wants to play b6, follow that up with bishop to b7, and challenge on this long diagonal. But queen b6 has other intentions. It's just to play for d5 for black and to stop d4 for white because it, you know, it's harder to play this move with the queen on the b6 square. So d3, saying I'm not going for d4, don't worry. d5, bishop g2, bishop b7, and okay, we clarify the action in the center. Now pawn takes e4 here would be a big mistake because after pawn takes e4, pawn takes e4, now white has the four on three on the king side and the one on zero in the center. So e5 is the threat to kick the knight away from f6, follow that up with knight to d5, and white is clearly making advances in the position that are uncomfortable for black to deal with. So taking is not an option, so d4 is played. And, okay, the position is probably about level, maybe slightly better for white is the opening. Knight d5, takes, takes. And what this trade has done is given white doubled isolated pawns the d-file, but also given this bishop a longer diagonal to work with. That's sort of thematic in lines like this, where this knight can swing around, say, to the c4 square, and also annoy the queen on b6. So castles, castle, bishop g4. That knight to c4 idea was really annoying. That's why bishop g4 is played. And h3 takes, takes, and knight a6. Now, d6 is one of those moves where you're like, okay, let me open up my bishop. I have a light square bishop, my opponent doesn't. Let me improve my position. But it actually doesn't lead to an advantage because after bishop d6, uh, queen b7, just simply rook to b8, and this pawn is quite weak as well. So you have the two bishops advantage, but you don't really have ways to take advantage thus far. So it's just having two bishops rather than a true advantage. So instead, after knight a6, h4, which is a great move, by the way, just going for expansion on the king side. And look at black's position. There aren't pieces on that side of the board. The knight's over there on a6. The queen's on the queen side on b6. And the position says all zeros. Look at that evaluation bar. That's chess.com server using the uh, Stockfish engine to evaluate. So Stockfish, with the black pieces, thinks equality. But, you know, there needs to be more depth on the engine to clarify the evaluation, but that's what it says. And I don't believe it. I think white is just better. And after h5, you put black in a tough spot. Because if you play h6, which stops the pawn's advance to that square for white, then you have issues immediately with queen to f5. And once queen to f5 happens, bishop e4 is the follow-up, and that queen's getting to h7 whether you like it or not. And, well, you really won't like it. So black does not play h6 after h5, and instead plays queen to d8 h6, g6. So, clear holes in black's position. If I can get queen to f6, I'm threatening queen g7 checkmate. This pawn on h6 does really well to keep black's king feeling unsafe. So, white is trying to improve the position. Bishop d2, finally connecting the rooks, and a5. Black is stopping any potential white play on the queen side, and also maybe thinking about play of its own, right? If Stockfish can get b5 in, then just continue making progress on that side of the board. Perhaps you can get some kind of active counterplay there. But that's why a4 was played. If you ever play b5, right, if this pawn ever touches the square, I'm going to capture it, and then your a5 pawn feels very, very weak. So you don't really want to play move b5, and instead b6 was played. Rook e2, rook e8, and since this rook is not connected to the other rook, now you can capture on e8 and play rook to e1. Rook b8, b3, just to make sure that the queen side is totally closed. Knight c7, and okay, rook e2. So white is not really doing too much right now, but trying to find an opportune moment to make progress. Any sort of pawn move for black is very compromising, 
For example, if you ever touch this pawn on f7 and go to f5, then you leave this big hole on the e6 square, right? And a move like bishop to f4 also is just going to be strong, where all of these squares around black's king feel very loose and easy to take advantage of for white. So if you can't play f5, that means your king is stuck with back rank problems as well. So the sides shuffle a little bit. Bishop h3, well, that has to be a good move because you're getting bishop onto an open diagonal rather than on this closed one with the pawn on d5 blockading it. And both sides are just maneuvering back and forth. Now, it's certainly worth mentioning that knight takes d5 is not a good move because white retreats this rook to e1, and now after this knight moves, say, back to c7, the white queen enters via c6, right? So you've given up a pawn to improve the position, demonstrating that the quality of your pieces is more important than the quantity when you're just giving up a pawn. In fact, white has a humongous advantage, and you can see that in the evaluation bar. So instead of taking that pawn, rook b8 was played, rook went back to e1, and still, they're just moving and maneuvering. And rook to e5, now to protect this pawn on d5, so bishop back, rook e1, and right about now, we finally see progress with bishop f4. So it was a timing thing. White was going back and forth to time everything correctly, and the point is, if these bishops get traded, then the dark squares feel much weaker, right? You, so queen d7, g4, I like this move a lot. Why would you trade on d6? Because it's not like black wants to trade on f4 anyway. So g4 says, please take me here, because once my queen takes on f4, my queen is just one step closer to checkmating you on this g7 square. So rook e8, perhaps thinking that exchanging pieces leads black closer to a draw, and the engine evaluation still, the bar is at zero. But when I see a position like this, I just love white's chances, and rook e4, please, please, please be incorrect, inaccurate, and take me, because once I take with this pawn, now all of a sudden I'm making progress you can't stop, right? It's imminent and unavoidable. So this would be just terrible, and you see the evaluation bar reflecting that. So you can't take me on e4. So black chooses rook d8, and now bishop g5, hitting that rook on d8. And look at this, queen f6. Well, mate in one is the threat, only one way to stop it, bishop f8. And finally, progress has really been made with queen to c6. You have to trade queens. If you move your queen to c8, you have a problem with this knight being pinned. So I take your rook. You can't take with a knight because it's pinned to the queen. And after queen takes e8, I simply take your knight on c7. That's disastrous. So queen c6 forces the queen trade. And after this queen trade, now I have a passed pawn on c6. It's not about undoubling the pawns. That's not the important part. It's about how advanced that passed pawn is, and black has no real movement to make. So bishop d6 was played, f4, and look how simple and straightforward this is. King f8, f5. Well, if you, you don't have any other moves, you sort of have to take me, because if you play the move bishop to e7, I'm not going to trade you on e7. I probably could and just get away with it, but I also can just retreat this bishop to the f4 square and challenge your knight on c7. And if you try to protect, I keep going forward with f6. And these are very concrete tactical uh, points here. Bishop f6, I throw in this check first to kick your king away from the defense of the e8 square. And once you come to g8, now I take on c7, saying that please take my bishop on c7 because rook e8 will be mate. So of course, that's not happening. And after f5, g takes f5 happened. But now there's a big problem, and that big problem is the h7 pawn because look how quickly white finishes off this game. f6, now your king has to go back over to g8 to protect, and you're tied down. So after bishop f5, the plan is simple. Go bring this king to g2, bring this king to e4, make the progress you need. The black king is stuck protecting h7. The black knight is stuck blockading the c6 pawn. So look, look how this game finishes here. You can't take on f6 because I just simply take you, and you may think, oh, drawing chances opposite color bishops, but of course c7, c8 equals queen is not just um, you're getting a queen, it's probably mating in just a couple moves. And that's why the evaluation sa says mate in seven. So take on f6 is not possible. Okay, but bishop c7 doesn't help. And bishop f4, trading the bishop's 
point at large. Knight is stuck um, defending the C pawn, and on the other hand, the king is stuck protecting h7. So knight takes f6 does nothing to save you. In fact, the game ended after king f4 because my king just goes and wins like this. King can go to f6 now, and this king on e8 is overwhelmed. If you go this way, I'm going to win this h pawn here and push my own pawn. So just completely winning end game. So a very nice demonstration by Alpha Zero playing positional chess there, getting a grip on the position that Stockfish seemed to in indicate that it was holding, but Alpha Zero had other intentions and seeing very deep that the sort of the paralysis in the position was in fact breakable and thus a win for Alpha Zero. Just the final position once more. There was no knight takes f6. In fact, the game was over here because king stuck to h uh, pawn and the white king is coming in.